Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. We're here at Sundance 2019. This is the IMDb studio at Acura Festival Village. And look, it's the director and the cast of The Farewell. Give it up for them, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when I read about this flick, I rolled a tear, man. I said, this is gonna win awards. This is beautiful as hell. I wish this happened to me. And then I was like, did I want this to happen to me? <laughs> and then I thought about it. And then I looked at some of the notes and I, it, it's a personal story. This comes from you. This is your story. Yes, yes. It, it happened to me in 2013. And I did a piece for This American Life and before this became a film. So it was, and the piece on, on This American Life is Chris White's heard it and said, hey, that sounds like a movie and stuff like yep. that. Yep, Chris White's and Peter Seraf. But what I saw in the notes that I thought was interesting, because it was the reaction that I had when I first read about it, I was like, oh my God, that's incredibly powerful. But then I was like, wait, wouldn't you want to know? Wouldn't you want to tell? And then I saw that you were the person that was like, we should say something. Yep. Um, what was that like emotionally, man? Because like, it's, you don't want to go against the family because like, it's, they're all doing it with the best intentions, but there is a piece of like, if, if this were me, I would want to know if I had like three months. How did that feel? And at the time, mm -hmm. were you like, this is going to make great art one day? You know, at the, at the time, I didn't know immediately. First, I was like, what the hell do I do? And I've always been in between. I think as an immigrant, you have your family on one side, and then you have the culture that you grow up in, which is America, on the other side. So... I had to actually ask my American friends. I was like, this is crazy, right? Like, I'm not crazy, because my family is making it seem like I'm the crazy one. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was a lot of that where I was just trying to like process all of it. And it wasn't until like I had to go to China and my whole family was like, you're very emotional, uh, so you shouldn't go. And uh, if you do go, like, you cannot cry. You cannot get emotional. You can't tell your grandma. Mm -hmm. So I was like, everyone, terrified. Everyone is in on it? Like, every, like did, did everyone who went knew the reason they were going? Yeah, it was, uh, so my father, our family in America, and then my uncle, her other son, they all live in Japan. And we hadn't all been back together in over 25 years. So they all knew, and uh, so I was like, how do I do this? And I went to, I was in Berlin at the time, I went to this Alexander Platz to like a media store and bought a little camcorder. And I got the camcorder initially as a way to hide behind it mm. so that I could remove myself from the situation. So smart. And. Uh, and then I got there, and my grandma was like, why are you behind that camera all the time? I just stayed with, behind it. <laughs> with good reason. My Lord, like, this is, uh, it's easy to say this is the kind of movie that's made for Sundance, but I think it's beyond that. This is the kind of movie that they make movies for. Like, just in reading about it, I was like, oh, Lord, what, what, a, what a human story. And to bring it to the world, man, you brought these fine cats along with you. Before we go a step further, you did just screen, correct? Yes. So I'm going to go down, and I'm going to start down there. How was the screening? I couldn't talk. So I just, it still hit me so strong, like my first time I see the script. Yes. So it's just so heavy for me. I couldn't talk. So just, <laughs> it just uh, so emotional. Um, Lulu did a great job. You, you've been, I've seen you in every movie ever made for the last <laughs> 10 years, you. man. Like, I, when I walked up to you before, I was like, this is like the arrival for heaven's sakes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream. Um, what, uh, what, was the, what was it like for you for the Sundance screening? Have you been up to Sundance before? I have, but I haven't been here in a long time. I think 13 years ago was my wow. first time. Is that right? So I haven't been back since. And uh, she really disturbed the whole viewing experience I had. She's sniffling next to me. <laughs> and I'm Getting all like, emotional. I, I'm like, man, girl, you're in this film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, no, but no, no, really. I, I thought seeing it for the first time, there were so many surprises for me. One, the humor. I didn't know, and people laugh at places I didn't really expect. Uh, there, I mean, this is a film. This is not a movie, it's a film. Mm. It is so stylish, it's so well put together. That I did not expect from a second why film. Did you that why did you because, you, <laughs> because it's only your second feature. That's why. Thank you. And, and it's really, uh, it's very European, the film. The feel of it doesn't feel like an American Shout film. Out right? I mean, it was real. Yes, Anna, I you know. I think, we, I mean, all in all, the surprises were, were kind of uplifting you know because i said okay actually when we talked about this this film with lulu i said well you think you know are we sending a wrong message i have some trepidations about 
I mean, um, is, are people going to go, okay, well, that's the wrong thing to do, just like the character, trying to search for whether or not it's the right answer or not. But if you look at the film, it really tells you that because of how it was done, mm -hmm. you know, that was the right thing to do. Um, it is. I mean, it's ripe for conversation. Like, when I read about it, I was like, people are going to come out of this movie and be like, I would have totally done that. I would never have done that. You're going to break up marriages, probably. <laughs> um, let's talk to you. This is your first leading role. You've been, like, this big, big year for you, obviously, between uh, Ocean's 8, Crazy Rich Asians, but th those are ensemble pieces. Yeah. This is you in a leading role. How does the, the girl from my vag <laughs> wind up in this moment in time? Tell us how to get there. Tell, more importantly, tell others out there how one gets from that step to this gigantic step. You know, I, I, I ask myself that every single day. I have, I have no idea. Um, uh, that, I, I don't know. I wake up speechless every day. I mean, I think um, one thing that I think helped to lead me here is, is never having a plan, never expecting anything out of it, just wanting to uh, work with cool people, do cool stuff. Um, I, I fell into a lot of this stuff, but I think with the farewell, that there was something there. Um, there was a, per a very personal connection for it. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't know we would end up here at Sundance. Um, such a unique perspective and, um, it, yeah, it, it incre it incredibly personal to me. Uh, the, the line between comedy and drama real close like most yeah. people outside of it don't how, how can you go from one to the other but if you can make somebody feel by laughing you can make somebody feel in another way by being yeah. dramatic how I mean, was that so I, I i i grappled with that i think i i um you know i i knew what people knew me for what people liked me for um i didn't know that i could make the cross to to to, to play billy and to, to serve her justice so um you know i was very nervous but i think that um I think what 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 all what ties all actors together, be it comedians or not, is is empathy, and I think that's what that's what real all the tears were real. I would cry, she would cry because I would cry, you know. It, she like it's just like an empathy orgy. That's that's what this was, um, <laughs> which I believe was the original title. Yes, it was called. And was then called they felt the like the farewell orgy. was a little yeah, more marketable. Yeah, you know, they didn't like Pretty that. Yeah, it didn't yes. test that well. Um, but no, it's, it's a beautiful story. I was raised by my grandma. My, my, my mom passed when I was four years old. So I, I understand that connection really well. And, and I felt like the, the, the woman, the very talented actress who played my grandma, she, re she was so good at, at being that, that grandma, that beacon of hope, that, you know, that love that you'll never get from any other family member. She, she did that really well. And it, it really was an ensemble cast. I mean, none, none of it would happen without, without these uh, incredibly talented people, yeah. Um, this, this was the year, or last year rather, we're in 2019, uh, you did SNL, yeah. which I'm a big fan, and, and so every week I watch it. Oh, cool. And the, the dance-off sketch was <laughs> one of my absolute favorites. Oh, good. And now when I see you, I see you dancing to the Price is Right theme. Yes. Every time. That's me. Yeah, yeah. It was such a simple, wonderful yes, move. Yes, thank um, you. We've got a hat here. Uh, at the IMDb. Oh, hell yeah. It's a winter hat, and they'll give you one when you all leave and whatnot, yeah. it's cold out here. But inside, many questions. Pick one question, and then oh, everybody asks games. that cool. question. Answer that question. Everyone answers that, okay. If you had to be snowed in with any celebrity, who would it be? Start down the line. If you had to be snowed in, you know, trapped snowed in the in, snow. You know, like, like you can't go anywhere and you're trapped with some person. Alcofina. Oh, oh. No, that was my answer. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Why? Why? You should have heard her? my answer. Well, I love her, oh, I love and she her. loves me. Love we you. build a great connection with. Yeah, she's like my in mom. Chongchun. She's like my mom. Yeah, yeah. so we have connections. Yes, we have. Yeah, so, yeah. and she's funny. She will make you happy over there. <laughs> you never feel cold. She make you laugh. She yeah, make you uncomfortable yeah, right. with some yes. of her humor as well. Yes. 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 What about you, boss? Uh, Maybe me. <laughs> you see the pressure I get? I know, right? We're just going to name each other. <laughs> All right, the next question. It's less the farewell and more the hello. <laughs> For sure, Diana. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> my, mine, yeah. is, mine is time I got to say, man, I've seen mine you act off. in many movies. I didn't buy that performance <laughs> one bit. <laughs> or one bit. There's well, no I truth in it. Though, but, but really, if I was snowed in, I, I consider her dad a celebrity. I would totally be with her dad. Oh, her right dad on. is so cool. Yeah, he is cool. You know what I'm saying? So that that would be her dad, honey. Yeah. Points, points for that. My lord, if there's a sequel, you just got into it. What about you? Um, Yul Brenner. I'm sorry, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> I love Yul Brenner. I love his eyebrows. Right. 
He's a good, uh, he's a good guy. That's the pull? He's a good guy. I love him. What about you? Right now, maybe like Ruben Oslin. He's one of my favorite filmmakers. You want to be trapped with another filmmaker? That'd be so <laughs> irritating. So irritating. I'm such up. a nerd. I'm such a nerd. Give it up for the director and the cast of The Farewell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See y'all later from Sundance 2019. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.